any big hotels have got scandals, just like every big hotel has got ghosts. That's, of course, according to Stephen King, who happens to be a massive horror author, in case you've been living under a rock, and also he happens to be one of the most famous guests of the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, which is our topic for today. This is the story of the Stanley Hotel. Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for coming back for another Ghost Stories and Makeup. In case this is your first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like this video. Maybe check out some other ones. Yep. Today's topic, of course, is the Stanley Hotel, which was the basis for the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's book, The Shining. And believe me, there are tons of ghost stories involved in this place. So to understand the Stanley Hotel, we have to first understand its creator, who was Freeland Oscar Stanley. Stanley was an inventor, an architect, a hotelier, among many other things. The in F.O. Stanley's time, school kids were using a drawing tablet that he created. Photographers were using plates that he created, which ultimately ended up making him a millionaire. And he and his brother invented what was once the fastest car in the world, the Stanley Steamer. Now, unfortunately for F.O. Stanley, in 1903, he came down with a case of the cough cough or the consumption, or as we better know now, tuberculosis. Stanley's ever optimistic doctor told him he should get fresh air, sunshine, and eat a healthy diet, but ultimately that he would be dead by summer. But like many people who came down with tuberculosis in the early 1900s, Stanley and his wife decided to make the trek from Massachusetts to Colorado in the Rocky Mountains so that he could follow doctor's orders. Of course, F.O.'s super fantastic doctor told him that he would probably be futile and that he would come out to Colorado in September so that he could pick up F.O.'s body, bring it back to Massachusetts for burial. Nothing like your doctor telling you that despite what you do, you're screwed. Lucky for F.O., his doctor was really really, really wrong. And F.O. ended up making a full recovery over several years and was hiking within a few months, five miles a day. Now, despite making a full recovery, Stanley and his wife, Flora, ended up returning to Colorado and Estes Park every single summer. However, Stanley and his wife were not huge fans of the rugged lifestyle they had to live once they were in Colorado, apparently because in the early 1900s, they found camping just about as attractive as I find it in 2021. Anywho, F.O. Stanley decided that he wanted to make Estes Park a tourist destination. So in 1907, F.O. Stanley decided to start construction of the Stanley Hotel name, which would, of course, eventually become synonymous with horror. Now, a really fun and interesting factoid about Stanley Hotel is that when Stanley built it, he wanted the whole thing to be electric. So he also built a hydroelectric plant just up the mountain from the hotel. He also put telephones in every single room of the hotel, which I find super interesting considering the hotel didn't have heat until 1979 and yet there were phones in every single room by 1909 when only 0 0.05 of the United States population even owned a telephone. Teenage me totally gets the need for a phone in a room but adult me is like Fuck that I need heat I need heat, people. I mean, and yet I still kind of get it because the Stanley Hotel was really meant to be a summer travel destination. So at the time, I guess F.O. just didn't see the need for heat in a place that would be closed in the winter months. Now, sadly, by the 1970s, 
the Stanley Hotel was just about on the verge of closing. That is until they got a visit by one of their most famous guests, Mr. Stephen King. He, at the time, in 1974, King was working on a book called The Dark Side when he started experiencing a little writer's block. So King and his wife decided to make the trek from Boulder, where they were living at the time, to Estes Park to stay at the Stanley Hotel, which at the time was already pretty much renowned for being haunted and was one of the reasons that they were about to close. Apparently in the 70s, nobody wanted to stay at a haunted hotel. So while they were there visiting, Stephen King and his wife were the only occupants inside the Stanley Hotel. In fact, when they had dinners, they would be the only people in the dining room and all of the tables had the chairs sitting on them except, of course, the one that they were eating at. Now, while King and his wife were staying at the Stanley Hotel, King spent a lot of time roaming the empty halls and hanging out with a bartender named Grady. You might remember his creepy ass character in The Shining. Now, it's really super important to note that during his stay at the Stanley Hotel, Stephen King did not stay in room 237. He actually stayed in room 217. See, 237 was a fictional room used in the Stanley Kubrick movie because the hotel where they actually filmed The Shining didn't want to be associated with ghosts. So they made him film with a fictional hotel room number. At any rate, during his stay, King was in his room sleeping peacefully. Well, not so peacefully because he was having a terrible nightmare that involved his son and the Stanley Hotel. It's said that Stephen King woke up from his nightmare and went to sit at the windows to look out over the mountains in Estes Park. And by the time the sun rose that morning, he had the bones for The Shining. Now, that's not to say that there wasn't any actual ghostly activity in Room 217, because, honey, there were. Now, while there's no crazy lady in the bathtub in 217, the story that actually occurred might be just as cray-cray. See, what had happened was a housekeeper named Elizabeth Wilson entered the room in 1911 to light some torches. Fortunately for Elizabeth, when she went to light the torches, a massive explosion shot her down through the floor into the dining room below. Miraculously, Elizabeth survived with nothing but a broken ankle. What do? Hmm? What do? You gonna help? He's gonna help. But even though Elizabeth survived her harrowing ordeal, it's said that she still hangs out in room 217. I mean, even ghost me would probably run far, far away from the Stanley Hotel. But Miss Elizabeth has stuck around and she's even been known to move things around inside rooms and unpack guest suitcases. However, Miss Elizabeth is an old fashioned sort of girl and does not like unmarried couples staying in her room. So those couples often report feeling cold spots between them and men in those situations have woken up to their suitcases packed and placed neatly by the door. There's also the grand staircase between the floors in the Stanley Hotel's lobby that's been dubbed the Vortex. It's said that that particular staircase is so full of psychic energy that guests get dizzy and lightheaded whenever they're around it. And it's said that people have seen Mr. and Mrs. Stanley hanging out on the stairs overlooking their business. Now, back when he was constructing the hotel, Stanley built a theater for his wife. The bottom part of the theater actually housed a two-lane bowling alley and the stage floor itself has a trap door for people doing theatrical plays to drop in and out during scenes. It's said that Flora Stanley is known to play the piano into the wee hours of the morning inside the theater. And if our piano playing ghost isn't quite enough, there's also a gentleman named Paul who used to usher guests 
back to their rooms during the 11 o'clock curfew, you know, like way back in the day. And he has been known to tell people to get out when it's curfew time. Paul is also apparently a fan of the tours that go through the Stanley Hotel because he will flicker flashlights of tour guests on command. I mean, I'm a ghost. I'm bored as shit, but I ain't nobody's bitch. Don't tell me when to turn a light on and off. Now, it's said that the fourth floor of the Stanley is home to all sorts of ghostly activities. And if you're a fan of creepy ass kids, this is the floor that you want to stay on because guests and staff often report hearing kids giggling, laughing, and playing in addition to doors shutting, etc., etc. Which all makes total sense because the fourth floor, while once a cavernous attic, was eventually remodeled and made into living quarters for female staff, children, and nannies. And if creepy ass kids aren't enough to tickle your otherworldly fancy, there is also, long before Stephen King had one, a pet cemetery on the Stanley grounds. There's actually a golden retriever named Cassie and a cat named Comanche who have apparently been seen roaming around and making a ruckus. Now, of course, with the release of Stephen King's book, The Shining, the Stanley was pretty much saved from elimination, and they've actually adopted the whole ghost thing and installed a hedge maze on the front lawn that was once a promenade. And of course, you can stay at the Stanley Hotel and look for ghosts yourself pretty much any old time you want to. Well, guys, that's it for the Stanley Hotel, which, of course, was riddled with Stephen King information. Sorry. So, I'm going to go put on some lashes, and I'll be right back with your final look. Okay, guys, I'm back, and this is your final look. Do you like it? I'm loving it! Anyway guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for another Ghost Stories and Makeup. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, like, maybe leave a comment. I answer. I really, really do. And don't forget to always love yourselves, always be a unicorn, and I'll see you next time. Bye!